Hey guys, I'm gonna give you the market update for the end of 2021 and then what my projections are for 2022. My name's Adam Panisi. I've got a couple hundred million dollars of property development projects on the go. I've transacted multiple properties over the last 11 years. And what I think is going to happen in 2022 will be some blood on the streets in some capital cities. And then there'll be a couple of capital cities which will keep powering on and also some regionals as well. So what I believe in 20 or what's happened in 2021 will kind of repeat for 22. So there's still more stimulus money that's going out from the government. The government's sitting on a huge amount of surplus and they're looking at deploying that. And the announcement of the underwritten loans, so the underwritten small business loans, will mean that the government underwrites small business loans up to $5 million. Now, I believe that small businesses will take advantage of this where they can. They'll go and get a loan, which is basically a three or 4% interest loan where it normally would be like 12 or 13%. So there's really cheap money. That money will then flow out into the economy and then obviously continue inflation. We do have the issue of material supplies. So from uh, cars to boats, if you're buying a new car, you might realize that there's a delay in the cars um, because of what's happening in China and also logistics around the world. Building materials have risen quite substantially in 2021. It's looking like they're going to continue to rise in cost in 2022. So that alone, just supply or building material supplies, so raw supplies such as timber, steel, concrete, all of that is going up. Um, it's already seen a huge increase in 21. It's looking like it's gonna go up for at least another 12 to 18 months. So that alone means that the end product, so the end building is going to cost more money to build, which means that the end value is going to have to do something. So it's going to have to move at least with that inflation. Now we might see some capital cities come off the boil or at least flatline. And I believe that the southern states or the southern capital cities, and what I mean on those ones is Sydney, Melbourne, um, might flatline a little bit, whereas the northern, so Queensland um, capitals, and then also some regional surrounding areas will continue to see some really great growth. Um, obviously, each area is specific. Some will experience more growth than others, but as a whole, I believe Queensland and Southeast Queensland will experience more growth into 2022 um, off the back of supply and also, uh, sorry, lack of supply, but the high demand, the people moving from interstate, um, we're I think going to see Sydney and Melbourne flatline. Um, there may be some luxury properties which may be hit a little bit harder, um, but the focus will be on I think Southeast Queensland and now that Queensland has opened its borders, uh, we're allowing tourists um, or interstate travelers to come into our state to see uh, or to experience the hot weather, the summer that they've missed out on. So that's my predictions for 2022 and the reasons why. And there's, a, there's some other things happening on the world scale as well, which I think contribute. Um, there's what's happening in China at the moment as in China with the biggest property developer um, over there. And people think that that's going to have an impact or a flow on to America and Australia. Um, it may have some sort of an impact. I don't think it will affect us entirely. Um, I think we are very separate, very separate markets. We have strong fundamentals in Australia. Once we start introducing um, overseas migrants, then that that supply and demand, more so the demand will get taken up again um, and we'll see even more pressure put on housing, especially with the material supply shortage that we've got and the logistics issues that we've got worldwide. Uh, we're not currently building enough houses in certain areas um, and there's plenty of areas, especially in Southeast Queensland, plenty of areas that are in undersupply extremely low vacancy rates. So it's putting pressure on rents, putting pressure on values. Um, there's a couple of markets, even in Queensland, that have come off the boil and have flatlined a little bit. Um, and that's pretty standard in any market cycle. Certain areas might be powering 
while other areas will come off the boil a little bit more. But overall, market's still remaining extremely strong and it looks like it's going to keep going strong in 2022. Thanks for listening. Hope uh, when you're looking at your next property purchase, you're keeping that in the back of your mind, but also keep in mind you're only buying one single property. If you're looking at manufacturing your own equity, then you're in control of that. But if you're just a buy and hold, you're obviously at the effect of the market. So the market might be rising, but if you're buying one single property, then that property, if you've bought it well and you've locked in equity, then you may see more capital growth. If you pay too much, then you may see that value stay the same at least, or um, if you pay too much, even in a growth suburb, you may even see that property go backwards. So just keep that in mind, you are only buying one property at a time, unless you're doing a huge magnitude of properties um, or you're doing you know, a thousand properties in one go in one suburb, um, you're still only buying one property. And so you're only looking at the growth on your one particular property, whereas I'm talking about the entire market growing. So keep that in mind. Hope that helps and happy buying. And we will see you on the next video.